Linus and I met when we worked at, uh, at Paradox, another Swedish developer, and we decided to to, to leave the company after f a year, I think. I worked yeah. there for longer. I worked oh, yeah, there for worked four there. years, actually. Yeah. So after four years, he decided to leave. <laughs> decided to leave after one year. We wanted to set up our own development studio. It was back in the happy dot com days, and we felt that maybe the company was more focused on money than on games. And we've always been very passionate gamers. We we love games uh, as much as we love making them. We also love playing them. And maybe the focus was a bit bit off for us. So in 2001, we started up our first studio. Didn't go very well. So uh, we put that out of business, started over again. And that was Avalanche. And this was in 2003. <laughs> the, the first company, is, it's a long story and, and a story. We were so. naive and young. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the short yeah, story. That, that is the short story, actually. <laughs> and it's that easy just to restart things? Uh, well, when you're hugely in debt, that's your only option. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> we both felt that we had um, so much more to give. The stuff that we've, we've done wrong was actually trusting the, the wrong people. And uh, so we wanted to start over again, be more careful, uh, be more focused on what we wanted to do. And um, here we are. But I mean, it's been the best learning experience ever. It's nothing like learning by doing. and by doing so many mistakes yeah, we probably did all the mistakes you could do in that one year yeah underestimating how long the lead times are in the industry uh, to get something done uh, in terms of signing a contract um, how expensive things are um, how hard it is to run a company more or less um, who you go into business with uh, that you need to go into business with people with the same motivation as you yeah, the list is long. <laughs> Just everything there. Yeah. <laughs> Hire a good lawyer early. So Which you used, used to be my, my, my father, actually. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of sucked, so. Yeah. <laughs> As a lawyer. <laughs> He's a great father. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys decide on the name Avalanche then? Where did that come about? We started with the A. We, we made a list and we couldn't get past A because we got bored. <laughs> so <laughs> we basically chose the first one. It's well, a list of um, code words from the Second World War. And we're not the only developers in looking at that list. When we started up, we found like Argonaut, um, Rocksteady. Uh, it's a bunch of other yeah. developers on that list. Do you think the other Avalanche got that name the same way? Probably. Okay. So, so much for innovation. <laughs> Is there a lot of confusion between you guys? Sometimes, yeah. We get a lot of credit for, <laughs> for Infinity. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We're happy about it. I think when starting up Avalanche, our focus on, on sandbox or open world game, if you like, from the very beginning was super important. Linus technology that he's been designing and working on for, for many, many years is tailor-made for the genre. So focus, I would say, it was one of the most important parts. Open world gaming has always been an, a niche that we've been uh, interested in and excited about. We knew early on that it's very important to take a niche and become the best in it. And uh, that's basically what, what we set up to do. Did your passion for coding just happen to coincide with uh, the open world genre that kind of lined up well? Or did you see that as this genre is going to be huge after no, GTA no. 3? No, no, this was way before any GTA game. I mean, uh, this started already back in the 80s, that kind of interest for open worlds and trying to create something that was beyond the boundaries of the physical hardware. I had the favorite game back then, the Elite. So those games were, were the inspiration in trying to do things that, that weren't supposed to be possible on, on the hardware. We continued sort of that mindset also here and we want to give our designers tools that they couldn't get anywhere else, basically. In the beginning we tried to centralize quite a lot, find synergies everywhere and, and we noticed after a few years that it didn't work. So we, we changed around. So we, we're, we're quite flexible how we, we're organized. We constantly try to, to be more effective, but, but also it's super important for, for me and Linus to maintain that flat hierarchy. As you probably noticed when you walked around here in the studio, you didn't see any walls. Uh, or, or walls, well, you probably saw some walls, but uh, there are no offices, no one being locked in a room, uh, no one that is being sort of sealed off from, from everything else. It's also very important for us to sit in the middle of things and be so close to development as we possibly can. Even though we're not on a daily basis work on an actual game, but mm. being there and, and, and uh, show that we, we're still uh, very, very passionate for this. We haven't gone completely corporate. It's more difficult now 
obviously being a 250 plus studio uh, compared to when we started when we were six. So the flat hierarchy, that's what you see it as, is just no offices trying to mingle with the developers as much as possible? Yeah, but also uh, organization-wise, uh, again, trying to be as close to development as we, we possibly can. Yeah, it's, it's important that everyone is passionate about what they're doing. That's also mean why we choose to work on games that we are passionate about, because then that spreads uh, in the organization. And we know that all our staff uh, that we have love to work on the games that we do, and that's really important for us. And so splitting into multiple teams, you see it as more financially stable as well, having the free-to-play focus side of things and then the kind of AAA side of things? Of course. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Very short answer. <laughs> <laughs> One part is, is reducing the risk, obviously, but another part is that we want to release more, more games more frequently. And, and there are so many ideas in the studio that we want to turn into games, so finding ways to make them become real. And do you guys find yourself subdividing even more to get more experimental and able to release more games? Uh, not, not, not really. I think we're, we're always trying to innovate in all areas, but for us it's really important to take the experiences that we have from, from every game and, and as we move into something new. I think in every game you play from this studio you see something that is familiar from another game. Now it sounds like we've released hundreds of games, but uh, there's something that uh, is familiar between all our games, definitely. But you guys seem to be having more and more small teams just with like the Primal subsection and then also with the mobile game. The Hunter Primal was a spin-off that we started working on quite late last year. It was a spin-off done in just a couple of months. We released it on Steam Early Access. We've been staying really close to the community and, and work with the community uh, for the full release uh, in March. It's been a great success and I hope we can repeat that with something new. Do you want to just talk about the studio and the history of the Mad Max project? When did that first come about? What's the whole full story there? Um, the, uh, uh, well, the, the setting, the post-apocalyptic setting has always been very appealing to us. We've always been big fans of the movies and... Growing up in the 80s, you can't really miss them. So this has been one of those licenses you always want to work on. We pitched a few post-apocalyptic games for over the years and, and obviously we, we talked to the people at Warner Brothers about various games and then opportunities came along and uh, all of a sudden we were asked the questions to uh, work on a Mad Max game and we were... That, 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 that. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> so you're pitching a post-apocalypse game and they're like, hey, how about we make it a license game with the Mad Max license? No, no, no that the, uh, the, our post-apocalyptic game was we had pretty much given up. Nobody wanted to pick it up. Uh, and then this opportunity came along and it was... Perfect fit. Yep. I think there's been some confusion in the past. Can you just kind of explain Corey Barlog's history with this project and with the studio and how those two will coincide? Uh, he worked on the project for a while and then he decided to move on, basically. Because he was working with George Miller before, so did he kind of bring the project with him to the studio? Uh, I, I don't know uh, how, uh, how his relationship was to, uh, to George before he uh, was involved with the studio here, so... Okay, but when did you guys start production on Mad Max then? About three years ago. Is it still based on the Just Cause engine? Or? Sure, I mean, all our games is based on the same engine, the Avalanche engine. It's been a really fun and, and challenging game to work on from that perspective because it's set in, in a wasteland. So we have to try to make that interesting. But I'm hoping you will agree, we, we really succeeded with that by paying really close attention to detail. So we spent a lot of time trying to express all the details that could be found in, in that wasteland and create variation within there. Uh, obviously, the, the open world technology is the foundation for all of this and creating these uh, enormous vistas and, and huge world and making it fun to explore. Well, from a technical perspective, it's been a lot, of, lot more focus on a narrative different gameplay. So building that into tools and the engine to how to express those things in animation and in combat and in driving and exploration, that's been uh, a very big part of it. So it's a much more complex animation system, for instance, the, the environmental awareness that the character has and the way you can fight with, with the vehicles and all of that. The narrative focus has been, um, I shouldn't say challenging, but that's where we have innovated uh, with this game a lot. It's such a fine balance between setting limits to the player, which we don't want to do, 
and at the same time setting up limits for the player because we want them to keep them into the story. I think we have found that balance absolutely perfectly with this game. There are those moments where you really want to see what's around the next corner and sometimes where you just want to see what's on the other side of a mountain. And it's quite a bit of a departure from the Just Cause series where you can always it's push the dumb fun angle. Well, I shouldn't say it got that dumb fun, but it's definitely got an avalanche flavor to it. It's got that craziness and a lot of it comes that uh, comes with the, with the IP obviously being quite crazy as it is, but that over the top action, the explosions, the tumbling cars, uh, stuff like that you'll find very familiar from our previous games. You guys just want to talk about kind of balancing the attention of the studio and the focus of everybody between Just Cause 3 and Mad Max. Is that a delicate balance to pull those resources and... Uh, not, not really, it's, no. it's, since it's a natural, there's a little water between the two studios, kind of natural split anyways, but it's definitely helped to have the games being separated from two studios. And then there is a lot of sharing in terms of obviously technology and experience and so on going on between the projects, not breaking the, uh, the rules of the agreements that we have, obviously. The natural boundaries between the studios has been very helpful, even though we try to keep Avalanche as, as one big studio. So we really don't see that there's a, a New York and a Stockholm studio. But just like the evolution of the tech of the engine has kind of benefited both worlds and everything. Of course, yeah, definitely. They're so different, so it's a benefit in, in different ways. But still, there's a core and foundation that is, is similar uh, from a tech perspective. Yeah, I think you'll see a, a big leap forward from what we've seen before. Uh, from Avalanche. Are you still passionate about diving into the code of the engine? Of course, I code every day. That kind of passion is, was, makes me go to work every morning, so I, I need to have that connection. And also, it, it, I mean, Christopher is also very much hands-on. It, it really helps for, for us when making strategic decisions to be the hands-on because we know what, what it's like to make a game still. This year is huge for us, obviously, with uh, the release of Mad Max and, and uh, JC3. With the release of two great games, so many opportunities comes our way, and we're trying to take things step by step. But looking forward to some more self-published games, obviously, but having two big releases in one year and a game that we've been working on with Mad Max for, for quite some time, it's be awesome to finally show it to the world. Does it feel like a long haul on the Mad Max project compared to like Just Cause 2's development? Well, GC2 was a bit different because we went through so much shit in the middle of it. But I think with Mad Max, it, it, I mean, it's always the same thing with the project. It's like in the beginning, it's, it's full speed ahead and then it's sort of flat out for a while. Then at the very end, it's like, whoa, 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 we don't want it to end. Yeah. Um, and then you're, you want it to end. <laughs> Finally have it out. But uh, no, it's been a fantastic journey. Yeah, and you want other people to experience what you've been working on for so long, and that's that's part of the reward, obviously, to complete something. Are you guys still planning on launching the mobile game this year, too? Uh, yes, in March, I believe. Do you think the ballooning of the size of the studio can support that? I feel like people normally try and stagger the releases just so they can keep the staff <laughs> it's busy. It's not really ballooning. I think it's been quite nicely paced uh, since it's, it's being so different games. I mean, uh, the mobile game is... Uh, developed internally. It's a very uh, small team. Yeah, it's, uh, well, yeah no, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> the balloon won't explode. It's been fun. It's going to continue to be fun.